it's an honor to be back here this year. Um, I really appreciate you all taking the time to be here. Um, as you uh, hints at with this quote, we look for uh, look in areas that other people don't, or at least try to. And um, today, uh, I'd like to tell you uh, what we call the remarkable story of uh, Georgia, the country of Georgia. Some of you may have uh, come across it at a very high level, um, and uh, a company there called TBC Bank, which is one of the leading uh, companies in the country. So let's just uh, get right to it. Um, the first part will be about Georgia, and then the second part will be about the bank uh, specifically. Um, but, but Georgia, in summary, is one of the most uh, unique investment opportunities and cases of uh, reform in a country that we've come across over the last uh, decades. Um, we'll, we'll get more into it, but uh, in short, it's, it's ranked uh, number six uh, on the ease of doing business list in the world ahead of the United States and the United Kingdom. Um, so it's gone from a complete uh, mess to number six on the list. Um, it's very pro-Western. They signed a uh, EU association agreement with an intention uh, over the coming years to merge fully into the EU. Um, it's very reform-oriented. Um, there, there's some uh, very unique um, things. That they have to have a countrywide referendum, for instance, to raise the taxes in the country. Um, and most importantly, and, and relevant to us today, is the fact that there's four uh, dominant uh, businesses listed on the LSE, um, all, uh, uh, all very high quality. Um, our work in Georgia spans about a year and a half. Um, some time ago, I had a friend who kept telling me every year, you should go to Georgia, you should look at Georgia. And every year, I said, yes, I'll do that next year. And, and so finally, about two years ago, we, we started working on the country. Um, we visited, we've done dozens of calls and meetings with the management teams, with uh, politicians, with regulators, uh, private competitors, and so on and so forth. Um, and all of the, um, the, the thesis really checked out. It's, it was a fascinating um, experience. Uh, today, it makes up about 13% of our portfolio. So as you can tell, it's a, it's a high conviction uh, investment in our view. Um, I'll let you read over the, the small print later, but uh, for those of you who don't know where Georgia is located, it's located basically in, in the Caucasus, right between uh, some interesting neighbors, including uh, Turkey and, and Russia and some others. Um, and, and we can get more into that, but um, needless to say, it's, a, it's in an interesting spot. Um, recent Georgia history, uh, it became a, um, an independent state in 1991, uh, breaking away from the Soviet Union. The economy after that point completely collapsed. It was down, it's a bit hard to tell because no one was keeping uh, statistics, but it was down roughly about 90%, completely wiped out. Um, during the next 10 years, up until 2003, um, they were sort of uh, scrambling and suffering under this uh, post-Soviet regime. And in 2003, 2004, um, the Rose Revolution occurred. Um, and uh, Mikhail Saakashvili, who some of you may have heard about uh, more recently because of other things, um, came into power with a huge um, uh, majority vote. And the first thing that he did was fascinating. He came in and fired the entire 11,000 person police force on the first night of his election. And that began a very uh, strong um, uh, and radical uh, implementation of reforms in the country. Um, in 2008, uh, there was an uh, invasion uh, by Russia into the two um, uh, territories in the north of the country. Um, obviously, there was also the, the financial crisis going on at the time, which uh, uh, was quite a confluence of events. Um, in 2012 and, and going into 2018, functionally, and, and again, we'll get more into this, but functionally, the, the reform program that had been implemented at that time continued in, in a very strong way. Um, the entire government is pro-business, which uh, we find uh, fascinating and, and rather unique uh, in this day and age. There's two parties, and, and both of them are, are very pro-business. There's slight differences in, how, in terms of regulation and how they govern, but functionally speaking, everyone sees uh, things this, the same way. Um, I mentioned that the listing, um, the uh, police stations are all clear, the House of Justice, it, uh, sorry, it clear glass. There's a huge uh, emphasis on transparency through the government. Um, there's actually no corporate income tax in the country, which is fascinating. It's a very, uh, there's only six taxes. It's a very simple to understand uh, tax regime. Um, and again, the, the government is hugely supportive of businesses trying to attract uh, FDI into the country. Not surprisingly, this has led to very strong growth. Uh, you can see 2000, since 2004, the GDP has grown about 5% a year uh, on average. Um, the annual currency depreciation is quite low. It's been a, the Georgian Lari, by the way, is the name of it. It's been a relatively stable currency um, uh, over that period of time, with some exceptions. FDI, I mentioned, is, is really a key component of the Georgia story. They have a, a huge uh, current account deficit, and, and to fund that, they're uh, requiring, obviously, FDI to come into the country. Um, it's something to keep an eye on, and, and I'll get a bit more into this, but it's been a, a very strong um, government is, is very focused on allocating this FDI as it comes into the country and, and uh, treating investors properly. Uh, Pro-Western, it's, it's a very pro-Western, not only pro-business, but pro-Western. These are some polls, and, and normally we're, 
uh, skeptical polls, particularly coming from the U.S., but uh, here it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, this is just of a few months ago that the populace is very keen on joining the EU, uh, which we expect to happen over the coming years, and also eventually NATO, uh, which is a bit more contentious. Um, there are vast visa agreements, uh, so the vast majority of you here can uh, go to the country of Georgia with no visa, uh, US, EU, all of these folks, uh, it's no problem at all. Um, tourism is, is uh, really going gangbusters. Um, some of you may have had friends or gone yourself. It was uh, written up in the New York Times just recently. It's growing about 20% a year uh, annualized. In fact, the spending, uh, there's some big spenders showing up, so the spending is, is growing about 40% a year. Um, there's wine, food, uh, skiing, beach, all this kind of thing here, and it, it's doing extremely well. Uh, can, you can imagine also the cost of, uh, of visiting is, is uh, quite low compared to other EU uh, destinations. Exports have been growing. Uh, this is expressed in dollar terms, so, so keep that in mind, but um, this gives you some sense of to where the exports are going um, uh, from the different countries and, and um, uh, growing over time. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I, I recommend you read a book. There's a book that the World Bank produced. Uh, it's actually a free PDF. If anyone's interested, I'm happy to send it to you, but it's, it documents all the reforms going from the Rose Revolution through, and, and it's a really uh, remarkable case study. Um, so remarkable that the World Bank, uh, as I said, wrote this entire book about it. But as you can see, um, and, or as you'll read, it, uh, they, they basically went from a very corrupt uh, Soviet nation to one of the most transparent, low corruption level pro-businesses uh, nations in the world. There's still a lot to be done. Um, obviously, the capital markets, the companies are listed in London because of the, the capital markets are, are quite uh, immature in the country. Um, and obviously, the EU association agreement, um, there's intention to become a full EU member at some point. So there's a lot of work to be do done in terms of regulations, making them uh, to, up to EU standards. Uh, this is a quick uh, chart of the inflation here. You can see there, there's been a few bouts of volatility, but generally, um, it's a very strong record. Um, in fact, the uh, central banker uh, of Georgia last year won the central banker of the year award for the whole world from some uh, central banker association. Apparently, we, we've met with him and find him very um, sort of contrary minded, uh, sort of uh, very thoughtful gentleman. And, and um, we expect that the, the uh, central bank to be continue to run in a very uh, thoughtful way going forward. Um, this is the fiscal deficit that I mentioned um, that, that has been uh, also a, a source of uh, some studying on our part. Obviously, the, the government is trying to balance the growth and, and well-being of the population while uh, having a growing country and not overspending. So far, they've done a very good job of that. We keep a, a close eye on it, but uh, so far, it hasn't been an issue. So to the interesting part, so why is Georgia interesting? You can see here in 2015 when uh, the Russians invaded, um, the, the spreads on the 10-year bond uh, blew out, and uh, today the, the real interest rates in the country are something like 400%, uh, sorry, 400 basis points. And um, we would argue that, in fact, Georgia should potentially be trading at a, a below some of these other countries, considering the risk that's involved. Uh, so there's obviously an opportunity for the investor to get um, very high real uh, rates of return in the country at the present time. Um, access to capital is improving, and, and on the right, we, we show here what can happen if the, um, if the country were to become a full EU member, as we expect over the coming years. Obviously, the, the cost of funding has come down, as I say over here, but it, if you look at what happens when it goes into the EU, uh, it becomes much, much less. This is just a simple hypothetical, but 10-year uh, bond rates in Georgia today are about 9%, and in, in the theoretical view that if you have an equity that has a 20-year uh, duration, every 1% drop in theory should lead to a 20% increase in valuation. And so um, obviously if, if Georgia were to approach this 4% uh, level of, of uh, Poland or, or Hungary or Romania, there would be huge value creation over time. Um, we've seen this uh, story before in, in Poland and Estonia. The, the, mar the stock markets around the EU membership uh, integration uh, performed extremely strongly. Granted, it was a, it was a strong emerging market period of time, um, but uh, these, these, both these markets even outperformed uh, the, the emerging market. So there are some risks. Uh, we can get more into, into the Q&A, but I, I mentioned the current account uh, deficit is definitely a risk. Um, the currency, uh, there is still a high level of dollarization in the system. So if you have a, a devaluation as occurred in 2015, um, you can, there's obviously an asset uh, liability mismatch within the banking system. Interestingly, in 2015, there were some small issues. Uh, there was a 40% devaluation in the currency, and there were some actually relatively minor issues regarding mortgages and loans that were eventually restructured and, and uh, paid off with actually minimal disruption. 
Um, it's still a poor country and there is still unemployment. So obviously, uh, like other countries, the city of Tbilisi, the, the capital is, is, uh, much more, is much wealthier and, and uh, um, uh, better off than, than the rest of the country. So there, there is some disparity in that. Um, quickly on, on Russia, and again, we can get more into this in the Q&A, but if you ask most investors, they say, ah, Russia invaded and, and uh, Russia controls the country and we don't want to have anything to do with this. Um, that used to be the case about 10 years ago. That was the case. Um, they took over, to make it short, they, uh, Russia took over the two pro-Russian provinces in the northern part of the country. Um, and it's important to understand that they were very pro-Russian and the rest of the uh, country is not. They're very pro-EU. Um, since 2008, uh, it's become sort of a demilitarized zone. There are mil both militaries there. There's no real fighting. It's just sort of a, there is no fighting. It's just it's sort of a, a cold uh, zone at this point. Uh, Georgia continues to ask for it back and sort of there's these back, uh, back and forth negotiations. But uh, at this point, we suspect it'll just remain as a, uh, a demilitarized zone. Um, but what's most important is the fact that the, the relationship between the Georgian government and the Russian government is probably at the strongest point ever. There's constant diplomatic discussions going on, and, and the, the relationship has improved uh, quite markedly. And I, I think that most investors are uh, looking 10 years and backward and not, not looking at the current situation. So let's get to the stock. Um, the stock, uh, we, Georgian, all four Georgian stocks are interesting, but we thought we'd talk about today uh, TBC Bank Group. It's, it's listed in London on the premium uh, segment of the uh, stock exchange. The market cap's a billion, uh, over a billion dollars, and um, the insiders own about 21.5% of the stock, uh, the original founders. Um, the, the investment thesis is, is uh, thankfully pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's a, there's basically two banks in the country. It's a duopoly banking market. Uh, TBC itself has about 40% market share. Um, six plus 600 basis points is in fact almost 700 basis points NIMS and has a, a remarkable value create, creation record over, uh, since 1993 in the founding. Um, again, we'll get more into all of these, but most importantly as it relates to today and the investment thesis is the fact that the stock has recently um, come down quite markedly in the last uh, months. Uh, it's trading today at about 1.2 times book value. Um, we expect ROEs in fact to be probably over 20%. Uh, they'll be over, in fact, almost over 25% this year. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go through the valuation, but we think that it's trading at a, a severe discount to other EM peers and also other uh, European peers as well. Uh, this is a quick chart on the book value and price to earnings. You can see it's, it's only, a bit, this is on the premium segment since, since 2016, but today it's trading at probably the most attractive price it's, it's been at since it's uh, listing in uh, 2016. So a quick history, uh, the, the bank was founded by the two uh, controlling shareholders, Mamuka and, and Badri. They uh, needed $500 in cash back at that point uh, in 1993, again, two years after the country had just broken away from the uh, Soviet Union. That was the minimum uh, $500 cash, so they got the cash and started the bank. Um, fast forward to 2008, the bank ran into some trouble, um, as did other banks during that time. They, they lost about 20% of their book value. Um, some of the other institutions came in and provided debt and equity recapitalization. Um, again, I'll talk more about this, but we think they've learned a lot of lessons. In fact, the bank today is arguably completely different than the bank back then, even though they obviously survived and can continue to thrive, but it was not a, uh, um, a, pr a pleasant situation when you have uh, the Russian tanks coming at you and the financial crisis and, and so on and so forth. Um, we always joke with the management about a stress test. If they've run a stress test, and they always say, well, you should look at 2008 when we got invaded. The tanks were near the headquarters and um, the, the markets were melting down. So. Um, and uh, in 2016, it was listed, uh, as I said, on the premium segment. They had raised some, some capital before that. Um, and then uh, just last year, we made it to the FTSE 250. This is the uh, value creation track record. Again, you can see the, the, um, the hiccup in 2008. Um, over that time, the, the ROE has been about 21%, including that, that drawdown. Uh, X the drawdown, it's been about 23%. So really remarkable record, um, and, and we expect it to continue. Uh, the loan growth has been about 23% a year um, since, uh, since 2010 after the crisis. It sounds like a lot, but in fact, this is a very underbanked, underlevered economy. Uh, there's only 50,000 mortgages in the entire country, a, a population of about 4 million people. So there's, uh, again, we'll get more into this, but there's ample opportunity for all kinds of other loans and, and lending across both the retail and the corporate side. The Georgian banking market is probably one of the most fascinating um, that we've come across. As you can see, it's, it's one of the most concentrated in the world. Uh, the top two players, uh, top three, actually make up about 77%. And because of the nature of the market, it's the, the, the ROEs have been about 18%. Uh, on the right is uh, TBC, obviously, and then uh, BOG, Bank of Georgia. Some of you may be familiar with that, more familiar with that bank. It, it's uh, just a bit uh, smaller in terms of market share size. These two banks uh, functionally dominate the market. It's, it's become a duopoly at this point. Um, other players have tried to come into the market 
at HSBC, SockGen, all these guys, and uh, unfortunately have had to go home with their head in their hands. Um, there's many reasons for that, and again, we can get into it, but part of it is also, oddly enough, the alphabet. The Georgian alphabet, you have to create a whole program uh, just for four million people because it's a different language and different characters. So it's, it's really not worth the time of these bigger players to come in. Um, these are the historical NIMS, as you can see, it, it, at the beginning it was plus 10%, uh, now it's, it's come down to about 7%, um, and we expect it to remain, obviously, uh, in, uh, sorry, remain in this level uh, going forward. Um, it's obviously still a very attractive level in our view, um, and, and partly uh, because of the structure of the system. This is also an, a fascinating graph. This is showing the, the country's banking systems, um, uh, le the leverage and the uh, returns you're getting out of the, each country's banking system across the world. And as you can see, uh, the Georgia in red uh, is a standout, and it's a standout because it's uh, one of the lowest leverage and uh, highest return. It's a capital-constrained market, no surprise. And TBC is actually outperforming um, the Georgia banking system. Um, it's also important to note that while TBC's capital one ratios are about 13%, a very he healthy level now, uh, we expect that they'll continue to, that ratio will continue to increase by about 50 basis points annually, uh, even assuming that the current 25% payout. Uh, NPLs are very low, currently about 3%. Obviously, it's cyclical. Um, we get a lot of comfort from the fact that the, the coverage ratios have been extremely high. There, many of them are collateral backed by their other real estate or, or cash. Um, and also from the fact that obviously the high NIMs provide uh, earning support from, for the bank should, should the uh, NPLs kick up. But it, it's quite remarkable. I mean, uh, TBC, you can see uh, South, Southern Europe and MENA and other uh, NPL ratios throughout the region are significantly higher. There's a huge uh, service for, uh, excuse me, a huge opportunity in financial services. Um, as I mentioned, there's only 50,000 mortgages in the whole country. Um, Non-interest income has been growing extremely rapidly. Another area of uh, interest is insurance. Uh, the insurance market is in its early days in, in Georgia, and TBC actually has TBC Insurance, which is actually the second largest insurer uh, in the country behind uh, Al Dodgy. So there's huge opportunity here. Um, the management is extremely technologically savvy, um, and uh, I guess many people suggest that that's the case these days, but it appears to be the case here. Um, la early last year, they launched what they a set totally separate bank, although on TBC's balance sheet called Space Bank. Uh, it's a fully automatic, uh, sorry, fully online bank. Uh, you just pull up the app, and, and it's growing uh, extremely rapidly. Management intends to take the bank into uh, Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan uh, probably later this year um, and, and grow in an asset light -like model. Um, also, as you can imagine, when you have the data on 40% on uh, of the country's uh, populace, um, it's very valuable. And so the, the management has wisely uh, realized this and started moving into creating a customer-focused ecosystem uh, they recently uh, bought control of a company called Vendu, which is a local eBay, uh, a local online marketplace, and they also got into the online real estate portal uh, business. So again, asset light businesses where they can use their, their data um, to their advantage. They've also used technology to drive down uh, costs within the bank. Um, obviously, as NIMS are coming down over time, they, they've been able to keep the, the margins uh, relatively stable. The cost to income ratio is really uh, quite uh, remarkable, and in fact, we think it'll come down to near 30% uh, by using technology in a very efficient way. This is the management team. Uh, the two founders on the left, Mamuka and Badri, um, again, own 21% uh, of the stock. It's more than half their net worth. They have other businesses. In fact, they were the uh, case study of a Harvard business school, case study about the uh, water bottling business. They also uh, owners of uh, the Anaclia Port. Uh, Vaktang is the CEO. He was, uh, he's been the CEO since, um, two th uh, sorry, since 1995, and Georgie, uh, the CFO, since um, 2010. All uh, from what we can tell and, and uh, talking to people who know them, remarkably hardworking uh, individuals and, and ethical and, and very well aligned. Um, mistakes from the past, I mentioned this at, at the beginning, uh, the loan concentration has come down again in 2008. They were highly concentrated with a few construction uh, customers um, that has uh, relatively fixed itself uh, on, on the top pie chart. You can see that the, the industry breakdown is now much more diverse, and, and again, the, the concent, uh, loan concentration has come down as well. So uh, in our view, any way you, you cut it, TBC is, uh, is severely undervalued. Um, you, you can look at it on a European basis or a EM basis, but in our view, uh, looking across the world, it should be trading more at 1.8 or, or two times book, uh, depending on how you want to look at things, uh, assuming you think that the ROEs are going to continue, which we uh, have a high conviction that they will. Um, so investing in the shares today, um, uh, there's two ways to look at it. Sort of the base case with no multiple expansion on book, just sort of a steady, uh, steady performance from here uh, would generate returns in the mid-20s uh, by our estimates. If you, if you expect some multiple expansion back to where the shares were trading uh, over the prior years, um, you, you'll get uh, something more into the 30s. 
Um, there are some risks, obviously, an economic slowdown. It is a bank. Um, again, we, we can get into the debate uh, of that, but the, the stress test uh, and, and so uh, 2008 and all these kinds of things. There's political instability risk, obviously, Russia I mentioned. Um, there's also a fierce uh, democratic debate within the country. So if you uh, Google it and start looking in Georgian press, you will see sort of um, a bit of a hostile discussion online going back and forth. Um, and, and relatedly, there you'll, you'll see also that there was some news a few months ago about a, an investigation by the government uh, into a related party transaction from 11 years ago uh, involving the, the two founders. Uh, we've spent a lot of work, uh, spent a lot of time uh, digging into the details of that. I think it's uh, politically motivated. It, it was investigated 11 years ago, and they basically decided to bring it back up to cause political pressure at this point in time. Um, so with that, I, I'd be delighted to take any questions you have about the banker or, or, or uh, Georgia. Thank you. Any questions? How um, dependent are they on Russian energy, or are they energy independent? Yeah, they're, they're at Russia. They, that doesn't play into it. They, they, uh, it's a bit seasonal to answer your question that from Turkey. There's some interplay there, but actually they're a huge hydro producer. The vast majority of the uh, energy is coming from uh, internal hydro. And, and secondly, um, uh, what's the population doing? Well, because Eastern Europe is ha having more aging and, and uh, depopulation almost than some other countries in Western Europe. What, what, what's their population? Is it growing? Is it stable? Um, it's shrinking. Um, that has historically been the case, and we think it's a simple reason. It, no one wants to live in a, in a badly performing place. The people are coming back, so we would expect going forward that that trend to reverse. But, but it is an issue to keep an eye on. It, it's, it's not a rapidly growing population, that, that's certain. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I have a question. Uh, actually, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, how do you get comfortable um, with a country that has 10% current account deficit uh, combines it with a fiscal deficit sure. of 4%. Yep. Um, and uh, especially, you know, the fact, considering the fact you're buying a bank, which is anyway linked to uh, the macroeconomic factors of the country. And the second uh, question is, I understand that part of the thesis is uh, uh, convergence, uh, you know, to Europe. Correct. And don't you think that is wishful thinking, considering what happened to Ukraine when they try and they were thinking about uh, joining the European Union or even join the NATO. I don't think Russia will ever allow NATO to be a, at its borders, and they've already uh, shown it, uh, you know, with Ukraine. Yeah. So I'm not sure that could ever take place. Um, on, on the deficits, you're right. It, it is something to keep an eye on. I, I would point out, though, that Singapore and all the Baltic uh, countries ran similar deficits in their growth phases. And the key there is FDI, right? You have to, if the FDI is coming in, it has to be, keep coming, and it has to be appropriately allocated. And so th there are instances, including those that I mentioned, where um, that has not been detrimental to the, the country. It's allowed them to grow quite quickly, but obviously it, you're, you're relying on the, the goodness of others to some extent. Um, in, in terms of EU and the NATO, no, I, I don't think the EU part is wishful thinking at all. I, I, uh, the association agreement, they've become extremely close regarding Russia and Ukraine. Um, it, I would argue it's a completely different situation for frankly. Uh, NATO is, is a better point. NATO is more contentious, and you'll note that I, I didn't pr promise that they were joining uh, NATO, but uh, I, I think the EU um, over the next, say, five years is, is more likely than not. We can discuss more uh, in, in details, but that's uh, sort of a high level. Thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Just a quick question. The percentage of the loan book that is um, denominated in foreign currencies, um, they, and, and what are those currencies? Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's a bit complicated. I mean, it's matched. I mean, it's it's basically in dollars. Uh, roughly about half, I believe, is in dollars. But they try to match it, offset it. So it's um, uh, that that's sort of how it works. But, if, if but it's different. Bor the depositors and borrowers are often different, right? Um, I'm sorry. The, the currency is matched, not the um, in terms of currency, but not the, the actual borrow. Okay. So so it's about half the loan book. Is that? Yeah, roughly yeah. speaking. Yeah. And in Frank and, and euros. That, uh, would that be no, the no, currencies or a U.S. dollar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Hello. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I would like to ask you: uh, Why do you think that in the future other banks uh, couldn't come in the market? No. Uh, I, I don't want to say they couldn't. Uh, they, they've tried historically, and it's been very difficult. I, I would say two things. The brand uh, recognition in the country and reputation of the banks is extremely strong. 
Um, I, I would say also that you have to keep in mind it's four million people, um, and for a, a bigger bank to take the time, and I mentioned the alphabet and all these other things to come into the country and try to build uh, a bank, um, I think it's very difficult. Um, so th there are other banks, um, some of the folks have online banks and, and smaller bank branches around the country, but, but it has been very, very difficult to compete with these two banks at this point. Oh, please. Uh, thank you. I have two questions. First question, if you could elaborate a little bit on management compensation in terms of first KPIs and then how you compare that compensation versus the, the stake they have in the business. Second question would be, they have shared anything with shareholders in terms of like dividends or something? What they're sharing with shareholders, you said? Yeah, the second question is yeah. about like dividends. If they have shared anything with shareholders or... or sure, so, so in terms of compensation, um, I don't have the exact... No, it's basically based on ROE throughout the group. Um, and, and each group is, is um, paid based on the profitability of their segment. For instance, the gentleman running the insurance business is, is based on the ROE of his business. Um, the, the, because of transparency, the amount of the salaries for the founders is not disclosed, but I, we understand it's quite minimal. I mean, the whole SG&A is disclosed of the, the uh, executive level Level, but it appears to be extremely minimal in terms of uh, total amount. Uh, in terms of dividends, they have a pretty straightforward policy. It's a 25% dividend payout. So the yield today is something about 3.5%, I believe. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I have had an office in Tbilisi since 2013. Yes. Uh, I'd like to add a few things for the benefit of everyone here. Uh, comparisons to uh, Singapore are, I think, inappropriate. Singapore has been a, you know, traditionally been a center for entrepot trade. I don't think Georgia will ever be a center for any trade because it's landlocked and uh, there are too many problems in the neighborhood, including Armenia, including Turkey, and including Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a different case, probably slightly larger population, but it has got oil revenue. Uh, Georgia has got absolutely no oil revenue. Uh, the ease of doing business, I fully agree with you. It's a lovely country to do business. Everything is codified. You can actually get a business off the ground within less than one day. You can actually go file your papers and you can go and sit in your hotel and you will get a business registration number. The same number applies to all the government departments in the sense you're automatically registered for VAT, you're automatically registered for everything you need to do to do business. So ease of doing business, yes. Uh, very high unemployment, very high education. There is a lot of poverty there. I don't think, I mean, it'll be very difficult for a new bank to come and establish itself. Existing banks will find it difficult to grow business. I hate to be a wet blanket, but I don't see Georgia as rosy as you see the future uh, to be. Uh, but those yep. were my two bits worth. No, understood. Uh, first of all, a point of clarification. I didn't mean to compare Georgia today to Singapore today, or, or uh, but th that was that's their ambitions. To be clear, uh, regarding the the um, uh, transit and, and trading, I, I we have a slight disagreement there. I'd point to the, the Anaclia port that they're trying to build, and, and not to say that it's all going to be trade and other things, but I, I think that they can have uh, substantial other kinds of business, including other kinds of trade, come into the country. Um, I don't dispute the the rest of the things you said. Um, I, I find it interesting you have an office there, um, but I, I um, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, in terms of the banks going forward, I would. Uh, say just on the point about growth that I, I think that maybe that's the reason the shares are trading at this price, that the market has a view that the, the retail deposit market has been tapped. And I believe that there's numerous other avenues for growth uh, in, in terms of uh, financial services, non-interest income, and, and so on and so forth with the mortgages. But uh, I, I appreciate your point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can ask you, do you, would you prefer TBC to Bank of Georgia at all? Uh, frankly, uh, either one is uh, fine, um, or both are fantastic. Um, we, we actually own indirectly Bank of Georgia. We, we're an investor in Georgia Capital as well. Um, and and um, so um, there, there's the, the high level, as you may know, is the Bank of Georgia is a bit more uh, levered, uh, a bit more aggressive, I would say, um, in terms of that stance. But um, they're, they're sort of equal. Uh, deposit shares and all these kinds of things and maybe some small strengths in different areas. But uh, I think if Georgia what does well, both banks will do quite well as well. 
Thank you, Ivan, for an uh, interesting uh, presentation and subject. Um, investing in, in these type of countries to bring cheap, valued, high-quality companies to the next level requires uh, significant liquidity in the market and, and, and investment from frontier funds, yep. et cetera, et cetera. How is that developing? Uh, it's developing. So last year was the first uh, domestic uh, corporate bond offering done in the country. Uh, there is, in fact, I didn't mention a Georgian stock exchange with about 65 uh, stocks listed on it. Uh, they trade basically when someone wants to trade, which is almost never. Uh, th there is a significant interest uh, in, in, from the government in getting that uh, back going. Um, and so um, you, to your point, it's, it's still in its early days, the capital market formation, but it's, it's coming. It's in everyone's interest, obviously, to get it going. There's a few other companies uh, waiting to be IP most likely in the short term they'll be in London, but hopefully they, they'll migrate back home at some point and, and the bond market will continue to develop and so on and so forth. But it's uh, early days. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.